So today I'm going to show you how to turn this little Raspberry Pi into a proper computer by installing Ubuntu Mate or Mate or Matey, you know, whatever you want to call it. First off, the setup for putting Ubuntu Mate onto your Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 2 is extremely simple, but we do need to gather a few things before we begin. First off, you're going to need your Raspberry Pi. Now mine is in a case, but you by no means need to do that. You'll also notice I have right here a uh, USB receiver, and that is for the keyboard that I use. And I just use my wireless uh, Logitech keyboard here, um, but you can use any mouse and keyboard combination, but you will need at least a keyboard to do this process. Now the final thing you're gonna actually need is a micro SD card. Uh, mine is 128 gigabytes, but you can get one much smaller than that that would hold Ubuntu Mate. Um, and you may also need an adapter for, to make it a regular SD uh, card size in case you don't have a micro SD card slot reader on your computer. My USB reader actually supports both, but I still use the, uh, the adapter anyways. So before we can actually put our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi, we're first gonna need to get the uh, SD card formatted and set up correctly. So let's hop onto the Windows desktop and get that done. Now, before we begin, we actually need a few tools and these are all free tools and all the links for them is in the description down below as well. The first one of these though is the Win32 Disk Imager and that's just gonna allow us to properly format the SD card in advance of putting it in the Raspberry Pi. The next thing we'll need is the uh, ISO, Im the disk image for uh, Ubuntu Mate, which can be found here. Um, we are selecting the 16.04.2 long-term support version. However, feel free to use e any of these really. These other two are just a little bit more up-to-date, but do not have the long-term support. And since we are on the Raspberry Pi, you'll want to pick the one on the far right. And again, this supports the Raspberry Pi 2 or the Pi 3. The third and fourth tools are completely optional. This one is the mini tool uh, partition wizard. And this just allows you to reformat your SD card after using it in a Linux distribution. Uh, Windows doesn't typically play all that nice with Linux formatting and will often report the SD card after you've uh, had it in a Linux system as having much less capacity than it actually has. This tool is completely free and I found that it actually does a really good job of seeing the Linux uh, partitions on the SD card as well as Windows partitions, Mac partitions. It just overall does a better job than the Windows built-in system. So I use this tool. And then WinRare, um, this is to extract the uh, disk image from the uh, compressed file. You do not need this at all. In fact, the Windows tool does just fine with this. You can just extract it. But I've, I've always used this, so I'll just go ahead and include it. Um, also a free tool here. Technically a trial version that never expires, really. So the first thing we're going to have to do is format our SD card and normally if you have never used your SD card in your uh, Windows PC, you'll be able to go to it and if I pop it in here, it will appear and you'll notice that my SD card reports and this is because I've actually already set it up once uh, with Ubuntu Mate. You'll notice my SD card appears as having 62.9 megabytes of capacity and that's not true it's a 128 gigabyte card that's why I use this uh, mini partition tool so I already have it installed so if I just go ahead and open the partition wizard and then click the launch application button you'll see all my disks here and on my D drive I do not want the latest version and on my D drive here this is the partition that Windows saw and it was completely missing the um, ext4 partition so all I'm gonna do is right click on this delete that partition delete that partition now I have all this unallocated space I'm gonna right click again I'm on create change it to an FAT32 partition and I'll just call it 128 SD click OK and then to apply these changes you have to click the apply button click yes and it'll take a minute to reformat the uh, entire SD card as one 128 gigabyte SD partition 
So it's applied the changes successfully. If I close the partition tool and open up my Explorer again, you'll now notice that my D drive reports the full um, 118 gigabytes after uh, formatting of the uh, SD card. And the SD card is now completely ready for the Win32 disk image. But before we do that, we need to extract the disk image from the compressed file. In WinRare, since it's installed, I can just right click that, click extract here. It'll take a minute again to extract the ISO image. And now that we have our disk image file completely unpacked, we can go into the Win32 disk imager. And this is just the installer. I actually already have it installed. And you're greeted with this very simple screen. You want to make sure that your device selected is whatever drive you're um, installing your, uh, or setting up for your Raspberry Pi. In my case, it's my D drive. If you're not sure, just go into your file explorer and go back into this computer and locate that drive. The 128SD is the drive I want, which is labeled as the D drive, so that is already correct. And then for the image file, click the little folder icon. I left mine on my desktop to make it easy to find and then click open there. You need to do nothing else here and just click the right button and then click yes to continue. And again, it'll take a few minutes to actually complete this, but once it's done, it'll be set up and ready to go. Okay, once it says right successful, you can click okay. Uh, you can X out of that. If your SD card uh, reader requires you to eject it um, safely, you can go in and eject your uh, device safely. Mine does not. So I can go ahead and pull out my SD card from the uh, card reader and put the micro SD card back into the Raspberry Pi. It is set up and ready to go. Now let's hop over to the TV so we can sort of see how to set it up once it's actually in the Raspberry Pi and turned on. Now while it boots up, the reason that you saw it um, sort of come up with the error message that said resize boot partitions or whatever it exactly said. Um, that was because I had a system on this previous to this one and I just reformatted that card. So if it is a fresh install, um, you may see that error, you may not. Either way, it's, it's not actually a problem for us. Um, now we have, uh, we are booted into the Ubuntu Mate, um, main menu for the installer and it'll just take you through the process um, obviously you'll pick the settings based on uh, your own preferences here okay so i selected english there um, now for my wi-fi you can hook up to your wi-fi if you want you don't have to or you can use the wired connection option as the pi 3 does have an ethernet port um, I'm actually not gonna pick Wi-Fi right now because I don't need it to. Um, since I am Hoosier Hardware and I'm from Indianapolis, we're gonna pick Indianapolis. Pick your keyboard. Name your computer. I use, instead of Shane Desktop, I'm gonna use Shane Pi. And now it will go through the process of installing the system, and I'll just let that run in a time lapse real quick. Okay, now we just need to go ahead and log in. And we are now fully booted into Ubuntu Mate uh, for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B in my case. Um, you can use this on the Raspberry Pi 2 as just dropped my phone. But anyways, you can use this on the Raspberry Pi 2 as well. Um, it's a little bit stripped down version of what you would see on the desktop side for Ubuntu. It's a little bit streamlined for lower end hardware. So that's the very basics. Once you're into Ubuntu Mate, you can start adding programs like you normally would from any other Linux distribution. You can set up your home network as needed um, and basically just use it as a little tiny computer for any day-to-day -day tasks. It may be a good cheap option for you if you are somebody that just needs a computer to do basic web tasks. So that's basically it. Okay, so your Raspberry Pi now is a full uh, Ubuntu desktop computer. 
If you like this content, give me a like down below, share, subscribe. All those things are super helpful to me and my channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They're the same tag to help you and make it very simple for you to follow me there. Now let's let YouTube go ahead and queue up a couple more videos from my channel. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.